and mama bear i love the wisdom you're sharing absolute alchemy this morning uh, so uh, we do have um lisa joining us from montefria alpacas are you going to stay and join that conversation with us em Good, because I think Lisa probably will be all right talking about um, how, how to start the day. And I suspect she li lives under cosmic knowledge. Let's find out now. Let's give her a nice big round of applause. <laughs> Hello to you. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, boy. No, it's lovely to see you, Lisa. It's been, it's been too Likewise. long. Yes. I know. I know. Oh, bless you. And, you know, oh. I don't know if you've ever been on the Good Morning Portugal show, which is a terrible omission on my part. You haven't, have you? No, and that, that's fine. That's fine. I'm not the best front of okay. stage. <laughs> but, you know, I can get over it. I can get over it. When it's with you and it's stimulating, we all know. Oh, we can move mountains. So lovely to see you. And I was trying to recall earlier on how it was yeah. that we met. And I, st I can't remember. But what I do remember is visiting you at the Montefrio Alpaca Farm Centre uh, just outside of Vero, probably, my goodness, six years ago, something like that now, and having a fabulous day with yeah. you with the kids. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a while back. It but, is. Uh, I, I don't know how you got hold of me, but you because that then just led on to Dean Michael. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's just it just opens doors, doesn't it? Absolutely beautiful how things have but you, unfolded. You haven't been to our new place, have you? You're well overdue a visit. I thought I did. I thought I came and I had a brief visit to your new place. Um, but you may have a new new place. I don't know. Uh, but, but for people who don't know you, here I am talking to you about the uh, the Montefrio alpaca farm, as if everyone knows it. I'm not sure they do. Could you tell us how it is that you got to be the alpaca lady here in Portugal, because it's a good story, isn't it? It is, and I'll try and keep it as brief as possible. <laughs> yes, okay. um, So it was, um, we decided to move to Portugal as a family, and uh, I had a family already in the Algarve, and we had a history of a lot of Portuguese students, Erasmus students, living with my grandparents at the time, which um, so gave an affinity with the Portuguese. So they retired here in the Algarve and we decided to follow suit. And I wanted to bring a micro business. I wanted to bring something to inspire. There was a little bit different. And my passion for wool started as a teenager and, and the, text, the whole textile industry um, from the beginnings of production, be it fiber from animal or from plant. I'm very interested because in London, that was the arena that I worked in within the textile world. Mm. And so it was an opportunity to make it a living. And originally I looked at Angora rabbits, but decided that this, this, the kind of farming you use with Angora rabbits is not very sympathetic. And I wanted a, a, a ecological um, permaculture based farm structure. So then I looked at Angora goats and Angora goats don't set a fine fiber in warmer climates. They need a really cold climate to make a good fleece. Interesting. So they were, they were out. Yeah. And then the birth of my third son, <clears throat> uh, we had to go into hospital after he was born uh, just for a couple of weeks. And uh, we were, there was no space. So we were put in the premature baby unit and there was all these tiny, tiny babies. And they were all dressed in synthetic fiber because premature babies can't actually regulate their body temperature. Yeah. At that time, I happened to be reading an article about alpacas. So this is post-partial, this is, this is, this is, life-changing decisions made two weeks after giving birth to my son. Mm. And I looked at the qualities of alpaca wool and they regulate uh, their body temperature by seven degrees from the heat and from the cold, because they experience extreme heat conditions in South America. And then I started looking a bit deeper and a bit deeper, and they became the animals of choice. And so we came over with a dozen alpacas, and it was six years of intense learning, because having grown up in London, I had no idea about farming, uh, especially in a foreign country with three small children so it was a big big <laughs> learning curve on the top of a mountain it's a movie and it's a movie it's a whole well three three we young children 
three young children and six alpacas brought them up. You brought them over. What well, did you have? Where well, are the alpacas from then? They were from the UK, and uh, I looked at a lot of farms, and uh, I I came across a lady called Lisa also, and she's my hero. Um, and she was the first lady to have alpacas in the UK because it was prohibited for them to be exported up until 1995 uh, into Europe. And she was the first lady to have alpacas in Europe. And the my Tor, who is my alpha male, who is my my darling, and he's the front man, uh, alpaca that is. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks for clarifying. Yeah, just clarifying. <laughs> The, 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 Viking, the Viking boyfriend tour. No, yeah, the alpaca. Yeah. Okay, we've got that. Yeah, the alpaca. Yeah. He, uh, his grandfather was the first to come into the UK. Oh. So our our experience of alpacas in Europe is really small. It's, it's a very uh, short period of time we've had them. So they're really new animals. And we I work a lot with the veterinary hospitals, the veterinary colleges, the ministry to... Uh, educate and to help so that we can gain as much information about these animals as possible here mm. in Portugal. Um, I would love to see this these little kinters reproduced. The idea is to, to promote uh, sustainable farming um, that is has a diversity within it. So it, it, it allows um, people to live in, in the countryside and make a living. It's Wonderful. not easy. No, so, we, this is what we were talking about. Show. Yeah, because yeah. it's it's so it's so contrasted or polar, isn't it? It's like you know, go struggle in the countryside, and that's why people are leaving the countryside, isn't it? That's why the Portuguese are leaving the countryside is because they can't yeah. make a living. I mean, it's, it's hard enough making a living in the city for Portuguese people, let alone staying in the countryside and doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and to have and I've experienced this, yeah, lots and lots of times. I've experienced young Portuguese, and they they really want to go back to the villages. They really would like to go back to their roots and do something that feels more akin to you know their, their principles in life and it's it's very difficult to make a living and for me this is something i'm quite passionate about is that we, we do have to make a rural economy viable and keep these mm. keep it alive yes um, and, and these animals uh, help in, in they they bring in another another form of revenue in lots of different ways there's a lot of diverse ways you can use them that's amazing, Lisa. What a lovely, what a lovely thing to be doing. And I know that's you know, like with uh, uh, by the way, uh, M Mama Mama Big Mama oh, M meet Lisa Lisa meet M <laughs> Mama Bear Hi, M. Hi. Uh, and this is a theme that unites the three of us. You know, this this the regeneration of the of uh, of rurality and a simpler way of life, but a sustainably simple way of sustainable. life. Because yeah. that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, a part of meeting you, I think, in the first place is when we first came to Portugal, we were doing the proverbial, you know, renovating a pile of rocks thing. Um, and so many people are finding that difficult because it is difficult, basically. Yeah. And we, yeah do need, we do need a bigger sort of infrastructure or culture, don't we, in which this, this what you're talking about, can be enabled by yeah. a community and not individuals like living or yeah. dying by trying it because it's just so precarious and it's such hard work and people are vulnerable when they do it alone and yeah. and the risk is very high and the impact is so high on people and couples and families and so on that Absolutely. something bigger i mean would you agree I, I had no idea until i started really thinking about this but it does need yeah, a, it needs a bigger yeah. picture doesn't it a bigger culture in which this can take place so how do we do that um my philosophy is live by example mm -hmm. and um, give people as much as possible the opportunity to taste it and give them a very uh, genuine picture of what's involved. So, um, you know, don't don't paint a fluffy picture. Um, but the the trials that you go through, I mean, yeah, I've been through quite a few trials. You know, it's been very yeah. challenging. Yeah, uh, pretty much experienced, you know, most of the extremes. Um, all not positive, by the way, <laughs> but there is a lot of positive along the way, also. Oh, sure, well. sure. But, um, but through that, uh, I mean, you, through yeah, through suffering, uh, you you experience a profound amount of uh, experience that is that you can utilize positively. You know, for others, 
um, for my self growth for me as an as a little example um, when one as a farmer which is uh, it's a very particular mindset and you take everything personally you feel responsible for that piece of land and that crop and when it fails um you know it could be really good at like you know like giving yourself a hard time um but nature has a has a play in that also you're not you're not the creator <laughs> you know you're, you're only a small part so um learning it was a, a life skill for me of how in the past i've taken everything on board as being responsible for the world and i must do more than is actually mentally physically and emotionally possible to yeah. being able to recognize no i'm i'm not the only one responsible here you know um and that was quite hard for me to overcome you know i i would take every every failing very very personally oh bless you and, um, and so so there's a lot of self growth that with farming i mean in the uk farming is the was i don't know the current dates but before i left farming was uh, the highest rate of suicides for example it's tragic isn't it yeah and, yeah and for me that is shocking here mm. are the people supplying you know our food um and they're suffering yes and and i and this is a uh, corporate uh massive conglomerate companies that are so yeah i'm really for the the small farms self management and governance and um promoting rural economy and uh at the principles of permaculture where you you service the, your immediate surroundings and gradually you grow from there okay um, yeah, yes sorry love it love that vision um when i'm rich which won't be long now uh, because the, we're summoning up the forces of luck we're, we're living under what was it cosmic knowledge cosmic knowledge yeah the the funding for this is going it, from wherever it is now can come in to this proposition that you're talking about because i've not heard it. It, it you know the the picture of it as we're weaving this spell to have this happen i've not heard it so uh, sort of um elucidated if that's a, a word a, a way of putting it or elaborated in in such a concise way that that's a clear picture isn't it we've got uh, pete talking about it as well it is hard work oh no not that one it's a different one uh, there is lots of work here in the villages yeah there's no shortage of work is there there's no shortage of people but physically, it is great, a great deal harder, and many old skills are dying off as a result. It is so sad. Mm -hmm. What's missing mm -hmm. is the wisdom and the will, it would appear, wouldn't it? And putting the resources in the right place and understanding that this would be a useful way for human beings and to live their lives. And it's creating a demand, creating a demand. Okay, say more uh, about that. Yeah, for sure. Um, for instance, uh, we can take eucalyptus as a, a very classic <laughs> example. Um, yeah we we need to switch out the eucalyptus yeah and the pine um but there is no incentive because it has a, a good value good market value yeah um so how do we uh switch it out for a different tree which is going to produce foliage which is going to drop and create mulch and not going to catch fire so easily that is a deciduous tree we have to create a demand for it and mm. it has to be equal or more than the value of eucalyptus and pine. Um, at the moment, with um, uh, the way we have value, I mean, I, I demonstrate this when I do my talks, when, when we're talking about alpacas, my favorite subject. Um, the life of an alpaca uh, starts at a thousand euros. The life of a sheep, um, if you buy a lamb, starts at 25, 35 euros, okay, as an example. So we value the lives monetary. It, it, there's a big difference between the two, yeah? Mm. Um, and the, so our attitude towards those animals can be um, very different. How, you know, that we, it's our monetary valuing system that dictates uh, where we go. And until I think we have a bit of a change of heart, uh, as to where we place our money um, in yeah. that way then if we all put our money in where our real heart was then we we might elevate and change that equation quite rapidly um mm. I, make, I make alpaca socks and they are not cheap they're not excessively expensive but they're they're not one euro 
Okay. Yeah, right. They yeah. can't compete with the mass produced sock. But you know the history, you know the exact animal that sock came from, you know the spinner, which is myself and the maker of the sock. Um, and that sock is not something you're going to throw away tomorrow when it gets a hole, you know, because I'm not, I'm not going to let you. <laughs> I'm going to give you some extra yarn yes. and I'm going to show you a video of how to darn your socks. And yes. so uh, those socks will stay with you for a long time and they have a story involved um, that, that, that you're attached to them. And um, for me, this is really important that we we value. So these new skills, uh, or the old skills, as the, that chap was saying, um, yeah. Yeah. people still, they're, they're there, but they're, they're not being valued. Um, and we meet, we need to make them valuable. And, and if we want to make it them value on the, on the big scale of things, then, uh, we need to make some, some changes as to where we put our money. Literally our values, it's a change of our values, isn't it? And it's the courage that, that you were talking about before, Em, I think, isn't it? Which, which is like, you know, somebody should value these things differently. Well, we're going to have to, it's going to have to be us, isn't it? I think it's going to have to be the people who, who who are seeing yeah. this actually doing it sorry i'm going carry on it's, it's the perception i was writing notes as you started talking lisa because what you was doing is living under cosmic knowledge whether you knew it or not how you started is you followed what made your heart sing which meant that you were following your core values so maybe you knew that those were your core values maybe you didn't but when you live under cosmic knowledge it aligns with your core values core values take you to the truth of what's at our core what's at our nature when we live according to what's our natural truth instead of what our ego wants with the big for sales signs and the throwaway culture what we're able to do is live a life which is more valuable we get more meaning from it we get more joy Absolutely. we get more bliss we get more ease and we get so much learning and everything has a higher value to it because that that shit's priceless like you, you know living <laughs> like like we do you can't put a price on this you can't pay for this in in the uk mm. you know you come over here and you 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 just got these amazing things and this this is everything in life is impermanent which sucks sometimes when it's so beautiful but unless we tune into our values we're gonna lose this we're gonna lose these beautiful noises and this beautiful space that portugal can gift us because like places like the uk you you, you don't walk through many fields before you you find him more and you can't be in a field without hearing sirens or seeing lights very often there's not many places without light pollution portugal is full it is abundant in places of natural beauty it mm. is abundant in in resources like it is abundant in people who are having the courage to show up and try new things and are willing to look at trying to find what works for them now because they wanted to change their lives and the, the Portuguese people want to be able to live at home but they have to move away because they can't afford to live here if we can try and come together and be more of a community accepting of who we are and returning some in some ways back to those old older values which is our natural instinct right. I reckon yeah. we're, we're on to a winner like we don't need the lights and the sounds of the cities. We we don't need the throwaway culture. We can have things that last. Yeah, and well, so that yeah. to me is so important. And I forgot that there's, this is so important to me, and I forget about it actually. And I'm so glad we've had this conversation this morning because I would love to support this move back to the countryside and 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 nurture these portuguese young portuguese they be called entrepreneurs wouldn't they but actually they're just portuguese people living in the traditional way that they used to live and our yeah. globalized sort of machinery 
is e eking them out of of, of, of of traditional lifestyle that we're all agreeing here is quite a good lifestyle. It's good for, for the locality. It's good for the individual, it would seem appear. It was good for the community and it's good for the planet. It's like kind of win, 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 win all the way. And yet, as um, Pete's saying, it's just easier to go and work in a call centre in Castella Branco instead, rather than be a carpenter or a mason's trainee. Um, skills that should be valuable. And we're the ones, you know, if we can see that, I guess we've got to find a way to, to have that happen in some way. Um, we rehomed five alpacas when we left Colorado, says Bob. So, Bob, good morning to you. Bob, lovely to see you and Vivi this morning. They're remarkably intuitive animals. We were a part of a kids' program using alpacas. They would fit extremely well into Em's program as well. So maybe... Uh, <laughs> You probably don't need that right now, Em, right? It is a new alpaca family joining you. Yeah, I think <laughs> but, you might need a bit, bit more weight on me and, and to sort out the land, but that's where in, I'm in at. In the future, <laughs> maybe, yeah. Um, alpaca fleece is the yeah. best the natural insulating fiber. I'm sure we don't need to tell Lisa that. I frostbit a finger on a mountain rescue once and used alpaca fleece in my glove for the rest of the winter to work and keep that finger warm that's lovely there's a look it's like the socks isn't it you know that's something that bob remembers from his own visceral life experience there and it is you know that is the thing isn't it you, the socks that you were talking about and and um, bob's gloves there they're not the same are they as the, the you know if you're working in a call center and you're busy you can go buy some socks you buy the cheapest socks and they're made by a kid in bloody Bangladesh or something. It's just that is miserable, isn't it? From start to finish, that whole that's the life as it as that's the direction of travel in many ways for, for many people in, in the culture we live in. And the different ones on offer a one one that we have lent into and have been attracted to uh, over here in Portugal. So it's amazing, Lisa, to, to talk to you this morning and be reminded about that. So thank you very much. Anything else we can do from a sort of you know practical point of view, do you think, to to help you specifically or or this idea? Um, well, I, can, I I contacted you because I am um, wanting well. I've been very fortunate since the beginning that I have never done any advertising. I was supported by the Portuguese. I caught their attention and the animals inspired them. Mm. And, um, but I'm still, you know, like I'm still not breaking even, you know, sticking to one's principles is, um, yeah, you, you have to, you know, sometimes make compromises. And uh, so I was like, okay, Let's try the advertising thing. But unfortunately, I have a real problem with advertising. Um, I think it's um, the backbone of capitalism. And I don't like the way people are bombarded. I don't like being bombarded. And so my interest is, is there another way? Can we do this another way where we are not overstimulating people um, I want people to know I'm here. I I love to educate and to share. Um, but can I do it another way without um, really putting it down people's throats? Mm -hmm. um, and so because it's I'm I'm trying to demonstrate that this is viable, and uh, it's not 100% viable yet. You know, and I'm very clear when people ask me, when people want to do something that I'm doing, you know, um, but that's because of my principles and, and my concept of how, uh, what my, my company stands for. Yeah. So, yeah, so that was my initial, like, uh, hi, Carl, can I come and talk, you know, because I wanted to put myself forward. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm at the moment, I'm interested in the idea of, uh, paying it forward and um, thinking that this is a really nice way to go but I'm not sure of Portugal for me it's always about um, making something viable for us as foreigners is one thing making mm. it viable for the natives is really important too yeah and so yeah. My, my thing is to this has got to work for everyone and mm. that and inclusively this has got to work for the animals and this yeah. has got to work for me, yeah. As obviously, I'm my client. So, uh, so that's where I'm at, and that's what I'm. I'm really interested in having those dialogues as to how we can promote ourselves in a way that isn't isn't aggressive and and brings um, brings the opportunity so people can can see, but they 
Hmm. If we did a pay it forward scheme, um, I think this is super nice because it allows people to um, pay by their means. And um, there is something quite special when you put your, your mind into that set of that mm -hmm. someone had actually paid for you before you got here. Yes. And, and you're leaving and you're paying for someone that's going to follow you. It's a mm -hmm. very different way of, uh, it sort of re-gears here a little bit. And Yeah, uh, I get it. It's giving rather than getting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, it's question. Your values. <laughs> I've got some good news and bad news. The bad news is it's two minutes to 10, so we have to finish, which means the good oh, news don't... is hopefully you'll come back to do a part two um, or even have yeah, a residency sure. where we have, you know, you pop and see us like M does once a month to give us an update okay. on what's going on at Montefrio because, you know, you're, you're, we're talking about alpacas specifically and we and we will do um, it because Fiona's got a question, but it, it's um, not metaphorical, but it's like um, it's a reference point, isn't it? You're, you're doing a specific thing, but from that specific thing, we've been able to talk about all sorts of other wonderful things this morning that we think might be quite useful um, as a way forward. So I'd love it if you'd come back and do that on a regular basis now. Um, have a, <laughs> I'm enjoying month. myself now. <laughs> well, and I would I would encourage that. I think you've, you've been very inspiring this morning. So you the the, the floor is yours. You know, come and join us. Have, have your own segment here and uh, with the alpacas. Mm -hmm. A quick question from Fiona. Good morning, Fiona. Um, it's not difficult. Is it not difficult to keep alpacas healthy here? I follow a YouTuber who says they really need very specialized diets and veterinary uh, treatments. Hers need inoculations every month and very specific specialist vets. If anyone knows the answer to that, that would be you, Lisa, right? <laughs> yes. Right. Uh, she can contact me directly if she'd like on Facebook or Instagram because you don't want me to answer that now. It's uh, with one no, minute okay. to go. You, 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 very, you've, you've always nailed. very happy to talk alpaca. And yeah. the answer is no. And They're easy. Oh, okay, good. And uh, how can we get, connect with Lisa easily? So I'm going to put the um, link to the Monte Frio Alpaca uh, farm in. Do you, is that what you call yourself? Are you a farm? Are you an, you're an experienced? What, what do you call yourself? Uh, well, we're Monte Frio Alpacas, yeah. um, but we have a, a logimental. So we have a, a Airbnb and we're on Facebook and we're on Instagram. Perfect. Okay, so there's a great opportunity and an invitation to go stay and hang out with Lisa and the alpacas there and and and, and use the Airbnb um, close to Aveiro. People can also visit the lovely city of Aveiro whilst they're with you. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's fabulous. Yeah, it's 15 minutes away um, yes. and from the beach as well. So it's a Which lovely your, location. What, Barra and um, the other one, I can't remember the name of it now, but it's, the Aveiro beach. Yeah, yeah, it's Costa Nova, Barra and Vergara and it's it's all I mean yeah I love it here I don't think you've been here Carl I think you have okay to well I'll have to put that right as well me and Bobby O'Reilly the Englishman the Irishman and the alpaca lady walk into a farm it's this is perfect well it's perfect we'll do that this year um locally says Fiona there's a place with camels and an ostrich no idea what he does with them <laughs> Vizinos a todos y a todos this morning from Philomena. We'll see you on, on Friday, I think, uh, Philomena, won't we? So looking forward to that as well. Um, great to catch up with you. Good to see you back in your special place there in central Portugal. Lisa, excellent to catch up with you in uh, your special yeah, place. The link is there Thank if you. anybody fancies booking to come and see you and, 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 and hanging out with you in your company and finding more about alpacas and Aveiro. Thank you both so much. Thank Everybody, you, have, have a Thank great you, day. Yeah, it doesn't seem like right to a great big rapturous round of applause. I just want to give you a nice, gentle thank you very much and a hug. And thank you so much for being here uh, with us this morning. It's been lovely. So we will see you all again soon. See you tomorrow morning uh, for a happy hump day. Look, Patty's <laughs> getting in on the action as well. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs> Take care. I'm going to give you some gumper, Dustin said. Here, here's some luck for you, living under cosmic knowledge, everybody. There you go. Blessings on you all. Bye for now. Bom dia, Portugal. In Portugal, there's a YouTube show full of fun facts you need. Yes.
Christ will do so in kind. The little vanity mixed with some insanity on the morning show with GMP. Good morning, Portugal, and I'd like to welcome you to another fantastic day. Hey, you gumpers. 